Ever wonder why bass crush moon baits like crankbaits some days? will only eat finesse baits like wacky worms when the bite is tough. One research study about largemouth bass vision dove into the biology of what do largemouth bass see and helps answer this question to help you catch more fish. So one of the foundational studies on bass vision was published in 2002 by two researchers in Japan. Now these researchers caught bass in Japanese lakes, they came in holding pens, and then they basically dissected bass and tested them anatomically, their eyes, and what's known in biology, fish biology, about fish vision, tested bass to see how they are, their eyes and their anatomy compare with other fish. Now, by looking at the lens and the retina, the rods and the cones, the receptors and the eyes of the bass, the researchers were able to use formulas and patterns from other types of fish to determine what bass can see, how well they can see, what distances, and what they probably see best. So if you're like me, you want to know all you can about bass. And some of this stuff is kind of interesting just from getting to see how they see the world versus how we as humans see it. But a few of the things I think the takeaways on how much detail they can see in the lure, does the profile really matter? And also, how do they view lures like a crankbait that goes more horizontally versus say a wacky worm or a drop shot that falls more slowly? They see them totally differently. And I think that gives a little bit of insight into how to catch them better. So starting off with some basics, bass can focus on things and they can focus on, on them by actually the lens in their eye. It's kind of like if you take a magnifying glass and try to read a paper, there's that sweet spot where you can it comes into view with a magnifying glass. Well, that's the same for the bass. They actually move their, they move their lens until something comes into focus. The problem on that is anything that basically becomes closer than five inches to them Anything closer than five inches becomes blurry. They can't focus on that. We as humans, we actually take our lens and we have little muscles that, that help reshape the lens. And the older you get, the less able you, you're less able you are to do it. That's why older folks need glasses sometimes, why you need reading glasses. But that we can do a little bit quicker, a little bit slower for them, but they can still bring stuff into focus. Now, if you look at a lot of underwater pictures of bass, you'll notice uh, a lot of times they stop about you know, it seems like five inches off, off prey. You see those classic shots and they're kind of looking at a bait. Now they do have the eyes on the side of their head. It's not really covered in here, but they have binocular vision or they see with both eyes right in front of them. You know, so off to the side, they see with this eye or this eye, right in front, they see with both eyes. And then if up to about five inches, you know, they can bring that into focus. So that's why you're gonna see so many times in those classic shots, here's the bait and here's the bass kind of going down on point, looking at it from a few inches away. They can see it well from a distance up to a distance of about five inches, then it becomes blurry. Now, something that's different for a bass, we have what's called a phobia. And if you ever tied on a lure, uh, if you're reading a book, if you're looking at your phone, maybe watching this video right now, I bet you're holding it about 12 to 18 inches in front of you, just right there, looking at it. If you tie on a bait, do you ever tie on a lure? Looking straight ahead, do you tie on your lure here? Do you tie it over here? Probably not, right? You hold it right here. And that's the phobia. That's the spot we have in a very narrow band in our vision, like a two degree cone, we have very strong uh, density of cones there. So we can see in, in high detail. If I look right here, I can see you know all my fingerprints and stuff. I put it over here and here, I, it, it's more of a blur. Bass don't have that. So anything within that five inches, they're gonna see it as well over here as they are here. They don't have that one sweet spot to really zone in and see it super detailed, which is probably good. They don't have that same amount of detail. The researchers estimated their visual acuity, a measure of how well they can see compared to humans, is about, we're about 10 times better. They can see a 10th of what we can. So. Basically, you know, we sweat over a lot of these details like this craw here. It has all these fine little lines and stuff. Uh, we can see a lot more detail. They thought maybe based on the cone structure, the bass can see better than that. But still, it's going to be a lot less than humans. So one of the first takeaways I'm going to take on this is one that I've always thought. Those detailed custom paint jobs and stuff, the tiny little uh, gills and all that stuff may give you more fish, more confidence on your bait but the bass probably aren't seeing it, especially if it's moving very quickly. Now there's a couple of adaptations that different types of fish have. Some fish that are more like active feeders that run down prey like tuna, and I'm sure that striped bass probably fall in this as well, they're hunting down prey. They have 
more horizontal vision where they can they can see fast moving prey hunt those down then there's another type of fish that are more sedentary or more ambush ambush predators ones that that need to be able to uh, in close range see in more detail and uh, ambush prey bass actually have both these adaptations and that's probably part of the reason why one we catch them in so many different ways you can catch them on a jig head minnow and a topwater and schooling fish way out in the middle of the lake chasing shad and then you can also catch them in a brush pile around a dock and thick weeds bass ambush catch fish right there in close range and it's part of the reason that bass you know in north america they live in canada they live in every state in the continental u.s plus hawaii not alaska they live in Mexico, Central America, some South American places, Europe, Africa. I mean, they're pretty much around the world. They're very adaptable. And I think that vision, the fact that they have both those styles of vision helps them pretty much uh, find forage in open water, in heavy cover, pretty much anywhere. So here's where the meat of the study comes in. And these are the two most important ones like I just got into. So for the ones that that they can they see shapes they have their cones arranged in kind of a square pattern and with that they can see shapes you know something that's more bulky more looks like a crawdad or a bluegill or a shad or something they can definitely tell shapes from each other based on that pattern that's what a lot of ambush predators use the ones that don't roam as much they can tell the difference between a bluegill shape versus a shad shape, versus that crawfish. They can definitely see some detail and distinguish between those types of prey. So that brings us to the most important finding in the study, and the one that I think is most useful to us as bass fishermen. So bass, just like humans, have cones. That's what gives them color vision, and also gives them the greatest amount of detail. Now those are lined up in a bass's eye in a horizontal pattern. So what that means is they see the most detail and they can pick up motion and uh, prey and stuff the best in a horizontal pattern. So stuff right in front of them and especially off to the sides, that's where they're seeing the most detail, that's where their vision's the best, and that's where they're most focused on. So as you can guess, when they're active, when they're looking, obviously spinner baits, you know, crank baits, bladed jigs, stuff that are kind of moving along, they're gonna spot those lures the best, they're gonna see those the best. So the flip side of that is they have way less cones, high in their vision, low in their vision. So things above them, below them, or things that are falling or rising, they're not gonna see in as much detail or see it nearly as well. Now, Dr. Jones, who was a biologist and a big time bass researcher who headed up the Berkeley team for years out in Spirit Lake, Iowa, he always thought that this kind of helped explain why bass, when the fish was fishing was tough, why they didn't get conditioned to lures that fell. And this is a, a you know Berkeley gen general that you can wacky rig, uh, drop shot baits, you know a, a creature hog like this, you Texas rig. When the bite's good, it's it's frontal and the wind's blowing and all that stuff, and they're chasing you know crank baits, spinner baits, you just whack the tar out of them. They, they bite it, bladed jigs, all that stuff. It's great, right? sunny and slick, uh, tons of fishing pressure, right? It's it's the weekend, everybody's hammering in the area, I mean, you know, fish, fishing tournament time, you get the cold front and the pressure, guess what? They won't bite anything. Drop shots, wacky worms, all that finesse stuff. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be small, but you have to go low and slow, right? You have to, to let the stuff fall out there, fish it really slowly. That probably helps explain it. The fact that they can see those horizontal baits moving a lot better. That's where their vision's better. They're getting a better look at it. Stuff that drops, they're not seeing it quite as well. They don't see as much detail. That might help explain it. A lot of those times, you know, they're getting a good look. It's sunny and slick. They're, they're seeing the bait so well, and I don't care how many stripes and dots you draw and how realistic of a paint job you get on your crankbait, they just won't bite it. But that old wacky worm, I mean, you throw it in there and it slow falls, you know, down in front of them, or you take that Texas rig and you pitch it in there, it just falls right in front boom, you're still able to get fish in those same areas. And along those same lines, you know, when fish are active, how do you trigger strikes with moving baits? This is a bladed jig, a slobber knocker here. When I'm throwing this, how do we fish this? Do you just chunk and wind it, just reel it back in? No, no, you're coming through grass. They're so good in grass, right? So you come through the grass clump and it's just, it's swimming along horizontally, you hit the grass and you pop it free, it goes up, 
and then it falls down. And when do those bites come? Almost always on that pause, right? When that thing's dropping back down and when it shoots up or when it drops down or it takes off again. To me, that's how you've always gotten more bites. And I think part of it, it's fleeing prey. So when it's that stop and go, it kind of triggers a predatory response. But I think part of that too, anytime you're using a swim jig or pulling a jig on the bottom and you hop it, you know, you snap at that stroke and retrieve or the stop and go with the spinner bait when you hit the stump and then you let it fall, they see that bait well, like we said, that horizontal vision, they see it well and they can track it when it's going along. But when that thing drops or when it raises, they're not seeing it as well. And when it's kind of, they lose that well-defined vision, they can still see it's a shape. Well, it kind of looks like a bass. And it probably also explains, you know, they don't have that visual acuity. They don't see quite as well as us. Something like a spinner bait, these blades, it's giving off flash and it's kind of wiggling. It looks something like a bait fish. They think it's maybe a few shad, maybe they think it's a bluegill, maybe they think it's a crawfish jumping off the bottom, who knows what they think. But that stop and go, you know, when that drop, they're not seen as well, and so many of those bites we get are on that drop or when you're starting to take it off again. So definitely, during the post frontal, it helps explain why those finesse presentations work. And even on the moving bait days, when it's overcast, windy, and they're biting, that stop and go, adding a drop to it, I think that research helps explain why they've hit it on that drop. Hope that helps. Go catch a few more fish, guys.